Morning, artist in recovery, Daryl. Yeah, it's me, John, out here on the West Coast. 3.39 in the morning, West Coast, and it's the 10th of October, 2003. Caught your vid. Hard to watch dash cam video from Supernova Festival in Israel. Yeah. Dude, have you been uh, catching my vids? I've been doing a hell of a lot of talking about this one here because this is... I know it's hard to deal with. I know it's hard to deal with. Sorry, that was my cane. It's going to wake her up. She almost be obeyed, just got up. My dog. Here's the thing concerning about this damn stuff here. It's affecting everybody. I mean, hell, if I happen to go into the liquor store, which is about 700 yards away from my apartment complex here, I'm not quite sure who's got the shift today. And there's a couple of guys that work there. One's a Palestinian and one's an Israeli. They're both good friends. But I'm wondering if... And I really don't want to rock the boat because I really like these guys and these guys like me. Bill and Ray. Ray's Palestinian and Bill's the uh, Israeli. And Bill has heart conditions sometimes. I worry about that guy. And Ray, he's family, man. He likes to talk good talk, but he's cool. He's cool. I've known these guys ever since I moved into this neighborhood several years ago. And I know I haven't seen these guys in several months because I... It's not on them. It's on me. It's on me. I've used DoorDash too much. I've gotten accustomed to it. And I haven't gotten myself to a level of going out there to take care of things I should. Or I used to. You know, if I'm running out of milk, go out and run some, get some milk the next day. Since I'm going to school, I have to time that out a bit. And it's just basics. But I'm getting the basics from DoorDash and paying them more. Instead of getting out of the damn house. And I miss these guys. And in this kind of situation, what we're dealing with right now, it's nasty. It's nasty. And I don't want to have I don't want anything to happen to these guys. Okay? But I haven't been out there just to take care of them. I really hadn't. And yes, Daryl, your hair is getting long. But I hadn't had my hair cut in a hell of a long while, and I'm losing mine. I'm going bald. I got this knot on top of my head that I hadn't had taken care of since the, uh, uh, since the biological nightmare. So... Yeah, this time, you're feeling it, aren't you? You're feeling it in here. It's kind of a bit, you know, a bit, tension levels kind of rising. You feel your blood pressure. You're feeling anxiety, a bit of problems to breathe. That's basically what's happening for me right now. Um, I'm going to take her out real fast. Give me a, well... Put us on pause. Sorry about that, Daryl. <sighs> Wake up in the morning, my back's still trying to kill me this morning. Not normal. A couple of weeks, I'm going to be seeing the doctor. You know, it's taken me a long while, Daryl, to uh, get medical track up. I mean, hell, I mean, you know, I kept saying to my damn logs that I don't trust medical establishments, okay? I don't. Today I'm going to have a shrink visit about 11 o'clock uh, on the phone. <coughs> yeah, you can do that these days. It's even fun when they're new FaceTime. And I can do it on my computer and just talk with them. There'll be no problem on that one. But, uh, yeah, that anxiety level that you're feeling and the adrenaline rush, and you're not happy with it and you're uncomfortable with it, how do you think I'm feeling about this whole damn shit? Holy crap, dude. I mean... 
we had two different worlds, but probably two in the same dirt and time, shall we say. I mean, you look like you're the same damn age group as I am anyway. You're not quite there yet. You look like a fur. You got maybe like 10 years younger than me. So probably you may not have remembered the first Gulf War in the 90s. My mother, God rest her soul, and my brother, God rest his soul, had dealt with their times of this. My brother, as a kid, watched the Vietnam War and didn't understand the damn thing about it. When they started bringing back the, uh, the footage, share it with the public, tell them what was going on. My mother was scared. She kept seeing the body bags coming in. She was always afraid the war was going to continue and my brother was going to be of age and then he was going to be drafted. She had made plans to take my brother to Canada. We haven't had anybody in Canada. But it was the only safe place away from the, from the draft. And me, it wouldn't take me anyway. I was a medical case. You know, John wakes up. Actually, John's born with crooked limbs and a holy heart. Literally. I mean, how would you like to have little tiny valves that controls the blood flow, flow in, your, in your heart? Bad blood mixes in with the good blood, and no wonder you're tired all the time. And that was me. That was me. And they discovered what the hell happened. And this one pediatrician, pedi cardiologist, actually. Here's my damn whistling in my heart. And he put me in the hospital immediately. He panicked. But still, I was a sickly kid. My primary care physician, I guess they didn't have one assigned to me. I got one assigned to me. Tough old country doc. During those days, 70s, no fun to being with a old country doctor who was trying to kill you at the same time while trying to heal you. Old country bedside manner was about to be irritating. Anyway. The 70s, you know, when the Vietnam War just ended and almost mid- we had the uh, prisoners coming back. The combat was already over. We didn't have to worry about anything like that, did we? We still had an embassy in, the, in the Beirut. Surely you remember your geography, Beirut and Lebanon. Surely you would have understood about Lebanon itself these days. Watching some of the stuff on television, seeing how Israel was getting its ass kicked left and right, trying to continue its existence in the Middle East, just didn't like them. Israel trying to keep Egypt from expanding its borders. And there was also Lebanon to deal with. It was a nation built out of war. Or refugees of the Jewish nation into the homeland to call their own. A lot of them displaced. Some actually made their home out here in, in the States. But the one in Europe, there's no place for them to go. Palestine. The original place that housed them before, why not again? Only well, this time it was already occupied. And by a decree of the United Nations, Palestine was basically chunked. And more of the Middle East tension increased. Israel gets their own country. Palestinians get shoved aside. Like they have always had been, unfortunately. You see, there's never been any peace in the Middle East. These guys fought 
over territory constantly, even in the biblical ages. It's no wonder the whole place hadn't blown itself up to hell, and if it had, they'd still argue over the damn ashes. So yeah, I did a hell of a lot of videos on this one here, dude. Scared? Uh, hey, um, yeah, I would say that. I would say that, dude. I would really say that. I'm scared of the damn thing, okay? I'm scared of the whole damn thing bringing the world into a, into a combat situation. It's bad enough we got Putin being an asshole at this point over here, conquering more territory, trying to get back his former empire. He ain't going to do it. Unless he's going to be expanding more and more resources he ain't got. He's trying to drain it from China, and China says, nope, can't do it for you. North Korea's going, yeah, for price. So, he's doing that one. And while we have that to deal with, besides our own political wrangling over here, and Congress broken as hell. Oh, did you hear that McCarthy wants his job back again? He doesn't want to quit politics. He wants his whole job back. As Speaker. Oh, this had to be fun. Oh, this had to be fun. We have a temporary Speaker. We can't get any bills passed at this point over here. We can't even get the House in order. We got a war situation happening over here that we need to get stuff supplied to Israel. God forbid. We can't even supply the Palestinians with just some basic emergency aid. Food, water, medical supplies, that kind of thing. Negotiators. But no, we got to support Israel 100%. This is what's going to take out Biden in his office. This war is going to take him out. If not really cause the situation where we're going to have to get boots on the ground. You know what the hell happened in the last 20 years, dude. But this time, during that time, we had the home soil. It was on a home soil. I still get nightmares on that from time to time when I talk about it. I get the emotional heebie-jeebies. So yeah, I've got, I've got issues on that one here. I had a friend of mine who went to the first Gulf War, came back alive. I've also got another friend who went over there the first. Um, I don't know what that. Actually, he did go to the army during that time. I think he did go over. Computer technician, EMT. He was talented. He still lives in he still lives in Texas with his wife and his kids in college already. God bless him. He just never talks to me anymore. I don't know what's wrong with this guy. I've known him for hell all my life. Some friends just drifted away and stayed that way. No matter how many times I could try to contact this asshole. I still miss him. I still miss him. He's probably still thinking I'm still mourning over my mother. And yeah, I am. did not like it. I don't care. I'm still mourning over his mother a great deal as well. And I care about him and his family. I just wish we had kept in contact these years. But yeah, I saw him go into the first Gulf and then the second Gulf as an EMT. And he came back and he was trying to continue his nursing. He's probably tried. Probably in the computer more. He was very smart about the computers. He also knew something about medical. Guy with many, many talents. I wish I was not like that. I feel like I'm not these days. I'm trying to understand what the hell is going on. I'm trying not to be ultra patriotic because I think I'll be turning into a maggot during those days. I don't support Trump. Not one damn bit or the followers at all. And if my friends or so called extended family had supported Trump, then I guess we're going to have a lot of political differences on that one there. But yeah, this scares me. See, every time these guys go into a into a belter with the with the Gaza Strip with the Hamas or 
God forbid, Hezbollah. Tensions are always rising left and right in, this, in our country, and we've got people screaming against the Palestinians and the Israelis, maybe both, one each, each other screaming and yelling at each other. They're trying to make, what are they trying to make, noise? And we've got law enforcement trying to keep these nighheads from killing each other. It's not the two nigh heads I'm worried about. It's the it's the guys being driven crazy by these groups that are going to be doing the doing the deeds, lone wolf style. That's what scares me. I'm going to be going on a campus tomorrow morning, going back to college. I'm going to be walking up there, and I'm wondering whether or not I'm going to be seeing the increased level of of security there. Or is everything going to be status quo? If it's going to be status quo, then it means either they're going to be on surveillance extensual, uh, extensively, or we're going to have the students out there again looking for more trouble and ready with the walkie-talkie. This scares me because this this brings out the worst in us. I'm afraid of lone wolves coming out there ready to blow people's heads off. I mean, we got an open and free campus. All you got to do is walk on a damn campus with a gun, bring it out, and have fun. That's what scares the hell out of me. You know, my brother had tried to talk to me about this one several years ago when we, when we both started going to college. Because we'd already seen the shootings happening at different places, different schools, malls and stuff. So, yeah, we were scared about it. We had to be wary about it. We had to be watching each other's back. I'm a solo now. My brother kept trying to tell me, watch your back, watch your six. Don't trust anybody. Keep constantly alert. Keep your eyes roving. He was always afraid I was unobservant. But he knew I was trying to keep up on, on culture and stuff. He knew I was trying to be more politically aware and also what's happening around us whether or not we're going to be getting into a situation of a shooting war or something like that happening. And yeah, it does scare the hell out of me. I mean, it scares the great, it scares the living shit out of me, dude. <sighs> there had been videos out there already made by uh, L.A. County Sheriff's Department about uh, uh, how to avoid things like that. And if you're in a campus, either you hide you run or you fight. Run, hide, fight or something like that. The LA County Sheriff's Department's got something like that. And I watched it a few times already just to get the, the pointers I need. These days it's like either you fight or you die. I'm too damn old and too damn fat to run. I've got a medical conditions right now. And my body's deteriorating. There's no way I'm going to run. Hide, maybe. But it's got to be a big enough place for it. So the only choice I've got is to fight, or lastly, die. And since I'm not fond of dying, i got to fight. i got no choice. I have to start thinking about this. I have to start going into that kind of mode and preparation there, Daryl. It scares the hell out of me. It scares the hell out of you, too. I don't know if you actually had that stuff up there in, uh, in New England. But out here in California, oh yeah, we got racial tensions over here like crazy. I grew up in them. It's not blacks versus Latinos. It's now it's going to be Israeli and the Palestinians we got to watch out for. But how do you tell a Palestinian and an Israeli from each other? You can't. Except you've got dress style, maybe language, clothing, jewelry, something. But skin for skin, I can't even tell the difference. Because you know what I see? I see the, I see an American. Or I see somebody living here in, in America. At least out here in California. And yeah, there may be some good differences, but... I'm not paying attention to that. Except maybe if they're talking, then maybe I could tell the difference. Maybe the different dialects and different uh, accents. Oh, what scares me? 
What scares me is the lone wolf coming out there. Of neither. Already driven in frenzy into hatred right now. Doesn't like Middle Easterners. Doesn't like anybody. Pulling out a gun and starts sh killing people because he's got the hatred running in his head. You know what scares me even worse? You know what scares me even worse, Cyril? Is violating everything I know and believe in and then afraid of. Just to be protected by it. I don't want that. I sure as hell don't want that. Bad enough I gotta start thinking about being shot to death by some lunatics out there who are trying to rob places, bringing guns. Oh, you didn't hear the latest one out here in the Southland. I just got the, some of the videos on this one. There was a, there was a store, a liquor store that he uh, posted on a local news channel. Jewelry. Armed robbery. And shots fired. Not from the store clerk, but from the robbers. It's not a new thing. It's still a scary thing. It's scary. Yeah. Uh, makes me afraid. Makes me afraid what the hell we're getting ourselves into, my friend. You think I'm scared now? Man, I'm, I'm feeling it. It's like I want to run away and hide. And I can't. I have to face this damn shit. It would scare the hell out of me if one of these neighbors out here starts to carry and starts packing if they're not already. But there hasn't been that much any kind of thing to, to set them off. Sure, there had been a few arguments from the neighbors every once in a while. And from some of them actually moved away. And for some of those who are actually still living here. I tried to keep a low profile. I tried to stay away from situations like that because I sure as hell don't want it escalating into something else. I tolerate my neighbors. I don't... You know, I, I tolerate them. Some of them actually I do appreciate them being around. And I sure as hell don't want to be put in that kind of lone wolf situation where I'm flipping out and going crazy because I just lost my sanity. It just scares the hell out of me. And I don't like guns. I mean, yeah, I grew up with watching the guns on screen and, and played Cowboys and Indians. No, I didn't play Cowboys. I played Star Trek. But, yeah, or played War. Toy guns. Not cap guns. Those plastic rifle. Kind of busted one. Made into a different rifle type, but still. And wooden swords. Uh, growing up as a kid and teenager, I played with that kind of stuff. But in reality, hearing about what guns do, do to people. I had, I had chances in my life, Daryl, to fire guns. Hang guns, and I don't like them. Rifles and scared shitless of them. Teenager, YMCA, about 16, 17. I took a grand. And I was at a shooting range at a YMCA camp, and I blew off the first two rounds. I blew off the. <laughs> the laundry pens that they had. These wooden laundry pins. And, you know, I wasn't the only one. I looked at the ground. I wasn't the only one blowing these damn things off. <laughs> First two, gone. The rest of the eight, I was focused. 
and I shot with a rifle a long time ago. I played video games a great deal as a kid. I have to have hand-eye coordination with that damn thing. But I didn't sight the gun. I didn't sight the rifle. And when I did, Several years later, my brother and I are going over to an indoor shooting range. He pulls out some of his weapons that he's been carrying with him for a while. He's got a 25 cal. 25 snub. That damn thing scared the hell out of me. I actually had an idea of just blowing my hand off. You know, just boom and see what the hell happens. Nothing happened yet, because I hadn't hadn't done anything like that. My brother kept trying to tell me some techniques. I was still scared shitless. He wanted to teach me how to protect myself with a gun. He's not going to be at their home. i got to be there with a gun. I have to know where his guns are. I have to know how to load them, clean them, and use them. I never did cover that growing up, though, or in our adulthood. We never did have the problems that we anticipated. 94 Quake, different story altogether. My brother had to use a gun to scare off some guy who wanted stuff out of our house or off our property. Right after the 94 earthquake, just... just moments after my brother's in self-defense mechanism he's got his guns he's got one gun cocked and he's got it in his back ready to go he had a carry permit for it this one guy was trying to get stuff off our property mom was the only person there and we came back home this guy's still yelling at screaming at Ma. Cops are too damn busy. My brother pulls out a gun, shoots it in the ground. You do know that when lead flies up in the air, gravity takes over and it falls right down, right? Well, if you happen to shoot it in the ground, you don't have to worry about that, right? If it's in the lawn. Scared the guy. And then my brother pointed the gun right at the, you know, at the guy who's breaking in. He goes, leave. I'll say it again. Ma's already called the landlord. We just survived the damn 94 quick. Everything looks like a disaster zone all around us. We barely survived the damn thing. Cops come by. My brother surrenders his permit. And they're telling this guy to leave. Right now... My brother's being cooperative, and he doesn't get busted. He doesn't. That was only one of the rare times I actually seen him pull a gun out and ready to blow someone's head off. Once one of the guns comes out, it's very committed. Or just about anyway. So, yeah... Tensions like this brings up the memories and the feelings and the anxiety level right now, including right now. Shall we talk about it? Send me another video about what the hell's going on. We'll share videos about what's going on, pal.